Whoa, so orange. Roses are red, violets are blue, oranges are orange, and carrots are too. When it comes to food, there are certain colors we expect to see. But did you know that some of these emblematic shades are actually fake? Well, here are 10 foods the U.S. government decided the color of. I can't eat these. They're yellow eggs, Marge. Yellow. Pickles. Say green. 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 When you open up your jar of pickles, you expect to see bright yellow greenish pickles floating around in a bitter yet tasty dill marinade. Sure, the shades of green can differ, but overall, there shouldn't be any surprises there. While pickles are naturally green, that over the top, borderline scary looking green hue is not the result of a natural process. Many pickle brands feel the need to enhance the color of their prized vegetables by adding a bunch of unnecessary and not so healthy extras to them. You would think that something that's naturally green would be safe from this kind of treatment, and yet they still receive an unfortunate dye bath. Most pickles have artificial dyes like yellow 5 and yellow 6 added to them to keep the color from fading while on the shelves. Even though these dyes have been approved by the FDA, it still makes some shoppers a little iffy about buying pickles, especially parents. Artificial food colors are believed to have a connection to ADHD in children. Another downside of really bright pickles, a lot of those jars are also filled with sodium benzoate, a substance shown to damage mitochondria, which can lead to potential organ damage. What? what not exactly the kind of thing you want to have on your burger. On the bright side, there are organic, uncolored pickles. They just look much, much less appetizing. They look like spit to you? Yeah. Margarine. Deception's a poison. It's like margarine. Everybody knows that margarine is 10 times cheaper than butter. Okay, maybe not that much today, but back in the day, the price difference was monumental. This processed spread was originally invented in the 19th century as a response to the expensive price of butter. Since no one had proper refrigeration, butter would spoil quickly and sell for ridiculously high prices. Margarine, the cheaper alternative, would come to save the day. Made by churning beef tallow, beef fat, with salt, margarine had a pretty similar taste to butter, but took way longer to spoil and came at a much lower cost. The only problem? The color was not as appetizing. Instead of being pastel yellow like butter, margarine was white, basically the color of lard. Not the best selling point. Understandably, people didn't want to spread something resembling fat on their toast. To solve the situation, manufacturers began adding yellow dye in order to appeal more to the customer's visual palette. This caused the sales of margarine to increase like like crazy, while butter became almost obsolete. A few years later, new laws and regulations prohibited the use of the dye, so companies resulted in using vegetable oil to give it the yellowish tint instead. I see what you did there. Good one. As we keep moving on, take a second to hit that like button, would ya? Thank you. Next! Salmon. Faded salmon color? Whether you think salmon is more orange than pink or vice versa, it doesn't really matter. Normally, the salmon you buy at the grocery store is a wonderful festive color. However, instead of the bright pinkish colors you're used to seeing, farm-raised salmon are actually gray. I have light gray, medium gray, dark gray. My bad. I'm colorblind. Wild salmon, on the other hand, obtain that beautiful color all on their own. Well, mostly because their diet consists of natural naturally pigmenting compounds like shrimp, krill, and underwater plants. Farm-raised salmon don't have the same luck. They are fed food pellets that contain astaxanthin, a type of dye used to turn them pink. Even though most research done on astaxanthin's harmful effects has been inconclusive, its use is generally recognized as safe by the FDA. Since there are no real results, there is no telling if long-term use is safe or not, and yet it is still frequently found in the salmon we consume. This dye is used because because consumers usually prefer darker shades of pink and are ready to pay up to $1 more per pound for a rich reddish hue rather than a discolored, translucent color tint. It's all about selling the prettiest salmon of all, even if it means feeding it with potentially dangerous <laughs> stuff. <gasps> I shouldn't have said that. Oranges. Orange is the new orange. 
Speaking of keeping appearances, let's talk about oranges for a minute. Obviously, oranges are orange. That's as easy as it gets. Still, whether the color of the fruit came first, oranges, the fruit, are not always orange. What a lot of people may not know is that sometimes, depending on the climate, oranges are green. In the warmer parts of the world, especially around the equator, when an orange is ripe, it doesn't turn orange, but rather stays a bright green color. That's because in cooler climates, the green pigmentation will die off and reveal its orange color. But the craziest part is, people living in those warm countries have rarely ever seen an orange-colored orange in food stands. Yeah. It's true. All they know is the green variety. Meanwhile, here, a green orange is associated with unripe fruit. This means in order to make them sellable in the U.S. and European markets, farmers in warmer climates need to artificially dye the oranges. The most common way to do this is to expose the green fruits to ethylene gas, which breaks down the color. The oranges are usually dipped in wax after the coloring process to hold in the moisture and extend their shelf life. So if you ever visit a warmer country, don't be surprised if you see a bunch of green blobs on the shelves. I will eat anything orange except an orange. Vanilla ice cream. Okay, let's say it is ice cream, but I didn't need it. I couldn't have. I'm lactose intolerant. Oh, vanilla, America's favorite flavor of ice cream. And how could it not be? It's a classic thanks to its simplicity and ability to go with everything. Or so people thought. You see, vanilla ice cream isn't as natural and simple as it likes to advertise itself. You might think it's all just a bunch of natural ingredients, except for all the sugar, of course. But people often ignore the fact that vanilla ice cream is not supposed to be as bright as it is. A lot of popular brands, such as Edie's and Breyers, use many foods dyes, sometimes harmful ones, to enhance the color of the ice cream and make it look closer to the color of vanilla beans. One of these food dyes is annatto, derived from the seeds of the achiote tree. Annatto might seem harmless at first, and it has been deemed safe to eat by the FDA, but more research is needed in order to confirm the actual effects annatto may have on the body. Several cases of allergic reactions and irritable bowel syndrome IBS, have been reported, especially in people more sensitive to the dye. There are some chemicals in an annatto that could change the way the body processes sugar. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> annatto is also present in almost every other light-colored ice cream, such as butter pecan, vanilla swirl, and chocolate chip. In other words, be wary of the innocent-looking ice cream. Trust me when I say this. Processed bread. <sighs> Gross, huh? It's perfect! When you want to make yourself a nice sandwich, going for the wheat bread is a good way to feel a little healthier. After all, it's got all the extra grains and nutrients that white bread simply doesn't have. White bread has little to no fiber, which you need for good digestive health and warding off heart disease. However, don't be blinded just by the color of your bread. Just because a loaf of bread seems brown and full of good things, it doesn't mean that it actually is. Many people wrongfully assume that brown bread will not be subjected to the same level of processing as its white counterpart. And yet, more often than not, it has. Bread needs to be picked very carefully to avoid being tricked. Some companies will simply transform their white bread into something it's not by adding caramel color to the loaves. <gasps> they tricked us! Yes, that's right. Instead of adding a bunch of grains to make the bread healthier, they will just end up adding burnt sugar to the mix to give it that brownish, healthy coloring. Caramel color has been approved and safely used in drinks and foods for decades, so it's not so much about the health hazard, but more about the false advertising of the bread you're eating. To avoid caramel color in bread, check the ingredients and look for whole wheat or whole grain as the first or second ingredient on the list. You can also look for the Whole Grain Council stamp on the packaging. Right, 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 right. Flavored applesauce. I'm going apple picking. If you've ever gone apple picking, you know the joy of getting home with your haul and making tons of recipes with your newly hand-picked apples. Apple pies, crumbles, and of course, some applesauce. Making applesauce yourself allows you to control how much and what you put in it, which is something you can't quite do when you buy it from the store. Maybe it's time to start making your own, or at least stick to the original applesauce, especially if you want to avoid some undesirable food dyes. 
Think about it. Many companies now offer flavored applesauce to give their customers more options. Sometimes it might be best to shelve the creativity and not stray too far from the beaten path. Not only do store-bought applesauces contain a large amount of sugar, but they also contain harmful dyes. Flavored applesauce, even the more natural blends, contain a bunch of food coloring instead of relying on whole fruits and extract. With vibrant colors comes the association with vibrant taste, which is why many companies turn to food coloring. The best advice? Get the original applesauce and leave the other flavors for other products. And why would you want applesauce that tastes like some other fruit anyway? I have no idea. Cheese. Now describe what you taste. Cheese. And... Cheese. It might be an understatement to say that America loves its cheese. Cheese goes great on, in, and with everything. From burgers to pasta to a plain piece of bread, cheese is a part of our culinary culture through and through. While in recent years many food companies are slowly trying to get rid of their bad food coloring habits, cheese is not included in the makeover. Take the beloved mozzarella cheese. And it's not uncommon for this pizza mainstay to receive some cosmetic help to look more appetizing. The director of food Food policy at Panera Bread revealed that mozzarella cheese often gets its bright white color from titanium dioxide. Without it, mozzarella would have a beige yellowish shade, which, to be fair, isn't exactly the most attractive color of all. Unattractive and worthless! In the US, this off white color is mostly due to the cow's milk the cheese is made from, which can have yellow hues. In Italy, however, it's traditionally made with water buffalo milk, which is naturally whiter because the animal can't digest just beta carotene. So if you want some authentic, genuine mozzarella, you can leave the beige cheese behind and take a little trip to Italy for the real deal. Rabbit a boopy? Que cosa? Peter, what are you doing? Speaking Italian. Banana peppers. I'm very high in potassium. Like a banana. It's not only food companies that are starting to get in line with the recent let's get rid of artificial dyes movement. Certain fast food joints have also jumped on the bandwagon and decided to offer better quality ingredients to their customers. Like Subway, for instance. The chain was known for its out of this world bright fluorescent banana peppers. I mean, they could be seen from a mile away. If you go with logic, you can't expect something this bright to be all natural. Obviously, something had to be added to the mix to make them so shiny. Subway recently claimed that the banana peppers would lose their signature glow-in-the-dark yellow sheen and be replaced by a more normal shade. Very double noise. Instead of using yellow number five, Subway now uses turmeric, a yellow spice, to make sure they don't look too dull and still somewhat appetizing. They wanted to go for a more natural look and natural taste. Yellow five is linked to contaminants that are known carcinogenic substances, while turmeric is, well, a spice. That same year, Subway also got rid of some other artificial ingredients in its recipes, like no longer caramel coloring in its nine-grain bread and roast beef, and they started using good old-fashioned vinegar to prevent its meat from spoiling. It looks like Subway took Eat Fresh to a whole new level. Noise. Peas. I come me in peace. There are a lot of foods out there that you would expect to have fake coloring in them. If you take Jell-O or anything rainbow-related, for example, you probably wouldn't be surprised. There's no way these foods were naturally colored that way. But when it comes to something as simple as canned peas, natural coloring is the least you can expect. You might think that these vegetables are safe from the deception, but as it turns out, the peas in that can might have undergone the same coloring process as any other sugary food. Why? Today, some manufacturers add green dye to their peas. Because who wouldn't want to eat bright green peas? Since the dye in the peas is classified as a process rather than an added ingredient, you will most likely never see green coloring on the ingredient list. Sneaky <laughs> tactics at its finest, really. It's always about the way the food looks. The brighter, the better, right? So next time you want to fill up on healthy and pure, maybe think twice about going for the can of peas. Think about it. Tap or click for more great videos, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad. And hey, leave us a comment.